Um, where did my desire go? Yeah. Where have all the flowers <laughs> gone? Long time passing. You remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> where did my desire go? Long time passing. Isn't it a long time ago since many of you actually experienced a pure desire? You got to wonder, where did it go? What, 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 what happened to it? And this is a very good question, actually. Because, because it, it illustrates that many of our desires have been suppressed through many means. Now, maybe we should examine some of the means through which desire is suppressed. Let's look at the primary one. What do you think the primary one will be? Yeah. Ah, that's not fair, is it? It's fear. Is the primary way in which your desire gets suppressed. Fear is the false appearing real. Now remember, faith is having a desire is having a faith. This is saying I have faith in nothing that is true. I only have faith in the things that are false, appearing true. Does that make sense? That's what fear is, is it not? Yes. Faith in the false. Faith in the false being real. That's what fear is. If you examine, like, why are you afraid of a spider? Because you're afraid of what it might do to you. Even though it's a tiny little thing you could squash at the moment. No, like you're still afraid. What about a snake and a, all the other things you're afraid of physically? Isn't it the same thing? You're, you're really just afraid and you don't really know why. Right? It's the false appearing real to you. The false expectation appearing real. So this is saying, this is saying I believe in false. What's false? So there's, a, there's the primary reason why there's no desire. I believe in what is false. Now, where that belief come from, it could have come from parents, it could have come from society, it could have come from your schooling, it could have come from some of your own experiences in life that have fed that back to you because of not having the, right, the concept that God is good and things like that. It can come from a multitude of sources. But it is the problem. So don't think your parents are the problem and don't think your childhood's the problem. Everyone's had some kind of a negative thing occur in their childhood and everyone's got some parents that didn't know what they're doing, right? And let's face it, most of us who have been parents still didn't know what we we're doing when we were adults. So, so everyone's got that. That's not what suppresses desire. It's the actual fear that we let fester and stay within us that causes it. Now... Fear, as we learnt in our previous group, drives what other group thinks. Well, addictions, right. Addictions, does it not? So addictions are a layer over your fear. Right. Right? A layer over your fear is going to remove you twice, you're now twice removed. From the desire. From desire. Can you see? Yep. You're now yeah, further sense. removing yourself. And if you go into the next thing above addictions, which is, remember we learnt that last time, it's now right. you're three times removed. <laughs> right. You see, yeah. and, and the more you do... You build a wall. You, you just finish up building a wall and say, so where did my desire go? Well, it's buried. It's buried under your denial and your addictions. Right. That's, that's where it is. Thank you. So it's still there. There's still, there's stu it still can be developed. You can still do something w about developing it, but you're going to first have to what? Remove the denial. Remove the denial and remove the addictions, the addiction. right. and then you'll start seeing some of your fears. Right. Surrounding. And once you start releasing your fears, desire, you start feeling, oh, maybe I can... Do some other things, right? Desire so will start becoming, you'll become aware of desire again. That's great, thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. But that's the problem if we have that issue. The light hasn't gone out. Sorry, well, it's just God made your soul so the light can't go out. <laughs> you know, remember, we said in the permanence principle, God created your soul so that it can't be des destroyed as far as we're aware. So, so. No one has ever had a destroyed soul, so that tells me that something, there must be a spark in there. But I don't know if you've read the Paget messages much, but in the Paget messages, there's one guy that said, I've lost my soul. Where has it gone? <laughs> I don't know. And what he really meant was he's lost his desires. He doesn't know, doesn't know where it's all gone. And what it, what it is, is buried under a whole series of mud that eventually means the light of your soul is so suppressed it just 
It's like covered over, covered over, covered over. It's like a ball of light being covered over and dipped in mud every day, drying out, dipped in another layer of mud, drying out. Eventually, it would be, have so much mud around it that, that you can't even see it's a light anymore, right? And that's what it is for most of us. Yep. Natalie, thanks. Is 